Facts. Number one love is learning something new. And today, I've gathered 50 more facts about Quatch Clans, making this episode seven. God damn. You guys seem to like it, and I love researching. Everyone's happy. As usual, I highly recommend you to watch the previous episodes if you haven't already. You might find them interesting, and actually, episode six has all the episodes tagged along with it. So if you prefer that, that's there. Links down below, and it'll also be at the end of the video. So with that being said, Let's get right into it. Let's do this. Boosted hero alters emit tiny plus five particles. It's a little hard to tell, yes, but if you zoom in enough, you'll certainly see it. Talk about attention to detail. Builder huts usually have Zs to indicate their status, sleeping, except the auto hut, which actually uses lightning bolts instead of the Zs. The Lava Hound was originally a goblin balloon type unit that attacked various defenses at the same time. However, the mechanics were way too complicated for its time, and it became the Lava Hound. The part of attacking multiple things at the same time became the Lava Pups. You can have a maximum of 50 Supercell IDs on one device. So in other words, you can have 50 bases. There is a loading screen hint that says, once upon a time in a clearing in a magical forest. You may or may not have seen it before. It only shows up when a player first logs into an account for the very first time, or when switching between accounts. A war in Glamour Leagues that turns out to be a draw has a white check instead of red or green. The least used super troops in the game are the Super Valkyrie and the Super Giant. A destroyed Town Hall 10 used to have a grill that appeared to have lava in it to match the theme of the Town Hall. For some unknown reason though, the Clash team stopped adding custom ruins for Town Halls, including removing the one for Town Hall 10. And they all look the exact same now regardless of the colors. Here's a Town Hall 9 ruin and a Town Hall 14. Neither of them have that beige orange color. <laughs> If timed correctly, sometimes a frozen mortar will throw a frozen ball on fire. <laughs> what? This is how the original battle log looked like before the game came out on July 16th, 2012, during its beta stages. As you can see, it's not exactly an attack log, it's more of a defense log, and since replays didn't exist, this was as much info as you had. Though, it appears you could have expanded that section for more info, however, no known pictures exist of that, or at least I couldn't find any. In 2019, Builder Huts were temporarily made red for the Lunar New Year event. Base links can in fact expire and no longer be able to copy the base. According to Darian, if no one clicks a link, it expires in 90 days. However, I couldn't find how long these links stick around if it's constantly being clicked. The Dark Age scenery is set in a real age in history with the same name. You might also know it as medieval times. I don't know, because medieval sounds cooler. Well, at a certain point, witches were prosecuted for witchcraft what we know today as the Witch Trials. And this scenery falls in that period. <laughs> you might be wondering why that's important to know. Well, if you look in the bottom right, you may notice some witch hats floating in the water and a cauldron. I'll um, let you think about it on your own. There used to be two more Clan War size options, which were removed in the March 21st, 2016 update in an attempt to improve the matchmaking along with some of the changes that they added. These were the 35 vs 35 and the 45 vs 45. You can view what's in your clan castle or siege machine by holding its icon in a battle. According to a Twitter post by Clash of Clans, the Barbarian in the Builder based teaser that runs into the ocean has a name, Emilio. Kind of a random name for a barbarian, but uh, yeah, I guess. The Sherbet Towers used to be labeled as Goblin King's Hideout, presumably where the goblin we see in this tutorial was hiding. However, after the Clan War League update that added new levels to the single player campaign, the Sherbet Towers was later relabeled as Abandoned Hideout. Clash of Clans lore, am I right? Kind of interesting though, where did he go? The first optional update happened in October 10th, 2013. The update was called Unforced Update, the very first where you had the option to update. And Supercell made sure you knew this because it was in the patch notes. There is a limit to how many players can watch a live clan war attack, and it might not be super obvious if you don't have a clan that's that active, but it used to be 15 and they bumped it up to 30, so basically you could have 30 players watching your clan war attack. 
Seeking Aramized used to cost Dark Elixir, but when traps started to get levels and stay in their position after an attack, the Seeking Aramine was changed to gold. Probably because buying one trap with a different resource just once didn't make a whole lot of sense anymore. So they made it so that all traps cost gold. It's possible to have negative clan gold for some odd reason. Of course, this is only a glitch and not that the person owes clan gold. <laughs> That'd be crazy. But no one knows why this actually happens. It's suspected that it could be an internet issue, an uh, out of sync error. If you play on an iPhone and have been for a while, you've probably never seen this. Bonus resources. It's literally just free loot, and a lot of it actually, that is given to you when you buy a Google Play card, but only when the promotion is going on. Even in the Android community, this is still something that many players didn't even know about. If you're the one to finish off in 3 star A district in a clan capital attack, you'll get an extra attack. You can tell if you got an extra attack by the little gold sword that you see. The Autobot uses scissors to cut down stuff instead of a hammer like the Builder. This might be the oldest clan message still available to see in the game today. At the time it was posted on Reddit just two weeks ago, it read 3665 days ago. Assuming it's still there, it would read 3682. For reference, the game came out 3903 days ago, so the message would have been posted on March 11th, 2013. Now that's old. It's literally over a decade old already. If you haven't attacked or gotten attacked or received no mail in a while, the button responsible for showing you those things will just flat out disappear. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. It's like use it or lose it, you know? Every time you move a building, the grass under it comes back in a different pattern every time. In December 2015, they increased the village size and obstacles were moved automatically for the player, but not the way some were hoping. Here's an example of a pattern somebody had with their trees before the size increase, and then after. <laughs> Unfortunately, there was no shovels at the time, so there wasn't much you can do if your pattern or obstacle art was ruined. Here's some numbers for those who like numbers. Supercell's top 5 countries by in-app purchase revenue or the US at 4.2 billion, Germany 814 million, China 619 million, South Korea 574 million, and Japan 553 million. And the top 4 countries by total downloads, and I'll just list these numbers on screen, are the US, Brazil, India, and Russia. If clan games ends in one minute, you can't start any new challenge, even if you think you could complete it in under one minute. Completing all achievements gives a total of 19,142 gems and 109,400 XP, which is enough to buy all 5 builders and still have over 10,000 left over. God damn! Speaking of builders and gems, did you know if you don't have all 5 builders, it will actually suggest to buy one of the builders in the suggestions tab? This may seem like an obvious fact for some, but for those who had 5 builders before this suggestions thing was even a thing, it's kind of a weird sight, I've never seen that in my game before. Here are some more old Clash logo variations they designed before the game's release. Now I say more because I feel like I may have shown some others at one point, but I made so many goddamn videos I don't even know anymore. According to Darian, a community manager, 80% of players are in a clan, and the 20% that aren't are mostly talent 4 and below. The first clan to reach level 10 was based in Romania called Brutus. It took them exactly 9 months. The first clan to reach level 15 is a clan called... I honestly don't even know, but it happened in February 2nd, 2017. The amount of time you'd need to be searching for a player to receive a timeout message is 30 minutes. This used to be 5 minutes, but it would happen way too frequently, so they had to up it. The pumpkin graveyard scenery is the only home scenery without a hidden banana. This is most likely due to it being a Supercell make scenery and trying to keep it as the creator intended. The balloon parade practice map is a reference to a Clash of Clans commercial from 2015 with the same name. In it, the Hogwarter sings Balloon Parade while their base is getting attacked by, well, balloons. But the Hogwarter mistaken it for being a balloon parade. To reach the maximum amount of gems, about 2 billion, it will cost 25.9 million dollars. It's like loose change for Bill Gates. According to Darian, if you were to get those gems from removing obstacles only, it would take 44,000 years. God damn! 
Before January 2013, donations weren't tracked like they are today. You could have been the top donator of the month and nobody would notice. When they finally were added, weirdly enough, you had to be in the clan to see that information. So if you wanted to see if a clan was active from the outside, probably the most important information was missing. <laughs> From its beta release in June 2012 to August 1st, 2012, about 30,000 accounts were created. Out of these 30,000 accounts, 160 of them still have that rare stone today. This was discovered by decoding the tag patterns assigned to beta players and looking through those 30,000 accounts, or at least the ones that still existed, to check for the stone. This is because the stone only spawned in bases before global launch. The goblin map. <clears throat> Mazu Naline. <laughs> God, I probably butchered that, but whatever, I'm not French. Maginoline. Is a reference to a fortification used by France during World War II. It was a stretch of land with various defenses in hopes they would deter attacks from Germany. Similarly, the map in Clash Clans is set up in a way where there's a line of bombs protecting the base. The Grand Builder, also known as the Ancient Builder, lives in a hut above the Capital Peak. If you go to the Capital Peak, you can also see a path leading up there. There is an unused builder base scenery asset in the game files. No one really knows why it's there, but it could be that they were working on some scenery for the builder base at one point and uh, forgot about it, threw it away, cancelled it, I don't know. Clash of Clans has a clan search website outside the game. So if you prefer to look for clans on a phone browser or a PC, which can be way easier, then you have that option. In the update that made troops free to train, they changed the clan castle upgrade from costing gold to elixir. If there are no more defenses for the royal champion to target, she'll throw her shield at defending troops and all other buildings. Despite Clash of Clans being banned in Russia in 2022, it wasn't until March 2023 where the game actually stopped working there. This is because Supercell didn't really ban the game there, they just removed the app from the App Store and you could still play with a VPN. As mentioned, it wasn't until a year later when Supercell caught on and even VPNs wouldn't help you get online. It seems some players still aren't aware of the free capital gold you can get from the tutorial. Since the game doesn't really tell you to do it, well as a friendly reminder, there's 2000 capital gold up for grabs if you haven't done so. Pretty sure I mentioned once that the gem box was bugged when it was added so it had to be removed, but did you know that the gem reward was increased once it returned? The original gem box had 20 gems, but after having to remove it for a few months and iron out some of those bugs, they bumped it up to 25. Alright, so that's 50 more facts. Like I said in the beginning, I love researching for these videos, trust me, usually it takes months of gathering facts on the side. but. I get to learn about the game, it's cool. I'm really glad you guys enjoy this series as well. Of course, I hope you all enjoyed. These episodes don't come around that often, but I hope to see you all in the next one. Have a gaming out. Peace.